Hi, I'm Mel. Welcome back to Summit Racing Quick Flicks. Today, I'm going to talk about alternator selection and how to hook one up in your hot rod. So the first thing I want to talk about is sizing or finding the right alternator for your vehicle. Now, here I have some early designed alternators. This is a 1G alternator for Ford. And this is a 10SI alternator for your GM vehicles. Now, these, these were common in a lot of our early muscle cars. And some people feel the need to upgrade their alternator to get a higher output because now you're running electric fans, you're running a, an actual sound system, and some of these early alternators that came OE on those vehicles just don't have enough output to keep up with the electrical demands. Now what's really nice is that our blog on allcylinders.com has a great guide to help you figure out and estimate the size alternator that you're going to need for your system. Uh, another great feature is that on summitracing.com, you can actually maintain the classic look of these early style alternators, but they've been reworked by manufacturers to actually give you that higher output. So you can, again, have that classic look, but still have that higher output that your vehicle demands. Uh, again, I'll include that link to onallcylinders.com below to give you a great guide at finding the perfect alternator size and output for your vehicle. So as you're browsing through summitracing.com or, or talking to our call center, you're going to find that we have a lot of different alternators to offer for your different types of vehicles. Uh, like I mentioned, we have a stock replacement OE style. We have upgrades for your classic vehicle. We also have stock replacement for your, for your late model vehicle. So we, we have a lot of different alternators for you. And with all of those different alternators, there's a lot of different ways that the manufacturers wired their alternators. Uh, this is one example of an OE four wire design. I say four wires because there's actually four wires from the manufacturer. Uh, the B on the back of the alternator, and a lot of the alternators are going to have the B. That's, that's the one terminal or post that's going to be on, on all your alternators. The B goes to the positive terminal of your battery. Uh, the IG or I is going to go to the ignition switch. Now that's going to tell the alternator to turn on and off. You have you may have an L terminal that's going to go to a charging lamp or some type of indicator inside on the dash of your vehicle. And then your S is simply going to check on the status of the battery to let the alternator know that there is a charge or the battery needs more charge, kind of give you an update or give the alternator an update there. Another thing that all alternators need, and this is most important, is a good ground. You have to make sure you have a good solid ground on all of your alternators. Now, more water, modern wiring techniques have kind of led to a single wire design. So they've been able to get rid of the S, the L, the IG terminals, and you basically have your B terminal and your ground. So the B, again, will just simply wire up to the positive side of your battery, and then the ground uh, will remain the same. Something, if you're going to go with the single wire route, is I recommend putting a relay in the system. Now, I talked about relays in my past video. I'll leave a link down below. But what the relay does is you're going to wire it, wire the low voltage side uh, and the low amp side from your ignition switch. And then you're going to wire the high amp side from the B terminal to your battery. That just basically tells the alternator to turn on and off. So another thing you're going to notice on summitracing.com when you're looking for your alternator is that alternators can either be internally regulated or externally regulated. Now, 
this Ford 1G alternator that I have here is actually externally regulated. And this is the external regulator that gets plugged into the wiring harness for this 1G alternator. Now on my 66 Mustang, this is actually bolted to the core support, just plugs right into the harness, harness plugs in to the alternator. Uh, pretty much by the 70s, the major automotive manufacturers have all switched to an internally regulated alternator. Now here's a Ford 3G alternator. This is actually the internal regulator. Now what a regulator does is it senses the current output or the current status of the battery, the voltage there, and it also senses the current demand of your system and then adjusts the alternator appropriately to give the appropriate amperage output. Alternator pulleys come in two different designs. You have your V-belt design and your serpentine belt. Now, alternator pulleys actually come in a few different sizes. And to figure out the best size for your application, there's a couple math formulas involved. First, you need to figure out the appropriate ratio. And so you take your crankshaft pulley divided by the diameter of your alternator pulley, and that's going to give you your ratio. You're then going to take your engine RPM and multiply that by the crank to alternator pulley ratio, and that is going to give you your alternator RPM. Now, alternators have been, been designed to give uh, the maximum output at a certain RPM. So you want to try to match your system to your type of driving to the alternator. So uh, generally, PowerMaster, they say, if you, are, you have a street-driven vehicle, you want to shoot for a three to one crank to pulley ratio. That's mostly because it's going to get the, the alternator spinning and giving you the most output when you're slowly cruising around at those lower RPM speeds. Now for a drag race application and a circle track application, because you're going to be running that engine at higher RPMs, it's closer to a one to one ratio. So for drag racing, they actually recommend a 1.75 to one ratio and circle track is a, they recommend that you shoot for a one to one ratio. Now you can try to get an alternator that is matched to your type of driving application for your vehicle. But because of the different types of crank pulleys that are available for your engine, you may need to go ahead and measure everything up once you get your alternator, just to make sure you really are shooting the different types of ratios that PowerMaster is actually recommending. So wrapping everything up on this video, uh, really want you guys to make sure that you're choosing the right alternator for your application. Uh, a few, few other little tech tips before I, I leave you. Now, if you find that the B post or B terminal on your alternator is going to come in contact with a, a valve cover or a bracket or something like that, give us a call. We'll walk you through on how to clock your case so that way you have the appropriate clearances. Another thing I want to point out is if you're upgrading your alternator in your classic vehicle or if you're putting a new alternator in your street rod, you do want to maybe upgrade your wires because you don't want an undersized wire which then can lead to some issues like a potential fire in your vehicle. Uh, go ahead and check out my wire sizing video that, that I did before. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description below on that one. Another thing I want to point out is we have connectors for these alternators. Uh, you don't want an old, corroded, broken up plastic connector connecting to your new alternator because that's going to lead to some connection issues. Now, another thing that you're definitely want, going to want to have, and if you don't have it already, make sure you pick up a good multimeter tool. Now, that one's an inexpensive one from Craftsman, easy to use. Uh, one of the great things with the multimeter is that you can test to see if your current alternator is up to snuff. The way to do that is to turn on your car and go ahead, turn on your lights, turn on your windshield wipers, turn on your radio, put a load on that alternator. Take that multimeter and put the positive and negative up to your battery. And if your battery is reading below 12 volts, 
That means your current system is not, or your current alternator is not putting enough amperage out for your system, and you may want to consider upgrading your alternator. So if you have any questions regarding alternators or wiring, make sure you either refer back to our other videos or leave a question in the comments section below. Like I said, be sure to watch some of our other videos and always hit subscribe to stay up to date on the latest QuickFlix videos. Thanks for watching.